This video is going to be looking at how you balance neutralization reaction equations. So um, these are neutralization reactions in which a base and an acid are added together and um, what is generated is a metal salt and water on the other side of the equation. So in particular this is going to look at um, two kinds of bases. It's going to look at the hydroxides and the oxide bases. So there is the third type of base that we look at this year called the carbonate base and um, that will be done separately because there's a slightly different um, neutralization equation to it. Okay so the first um, rule that you need to follow when you're balancing equations is to write out the word equation. Now some of you will find this um, more intuitive to do it through the word equation or easier to do it just using the formulas but it is a requirement that you have to be able to write a word equation so it's always a really good place to start. Okay. So this one here I've written out in full, but let's just break that down a little bit and talk about where these components come from or, or how these products are being produced. Okay, So we know that when we add a, a base, which is the sodium hydroxide, and an acid, in this case it's the hydrochloric acid together, it's going to produce a metal salt and water. So how do we actually get this metal salt, which is over um, this side here? Okay. So the metal, the only place in this equation it can come from is the sodium and that is found in the base and it's going to combine, so a metal salt is basically a combination of a metal and a non-metal together and so the non-metal part is going to come from over here which is the chloride part here and here we have the sodium part, okay. So these combine together and over the other side that is going to give us NaCl or sodium chloride. The second rule is that you need to then write out the formula for each of the components within your equation. Now this is where your balancing ionic formula um, ability comes into play and so unless you can balance your ionic compounds by themselves to start with your equations are never going to balance so make sure that you have got um, that skill honed and you're able to problem solve if you um, come across any problems when you're doing that. Okay so let's write out the equations, sorry not the equations, the formula for sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid. Okay so sodium hydroxide NaO H and because sodium is a 1 plus ion and hydroxide is a 1 minus ion they are nicely balanced so we don't need to do anything else with that. We are going to add hydrochloric acid on so hydrochloric acid formula HCl and this is going to lead to the formation of sodium chloride so being NaCl Sodium is a 1 plus ion, chloride is a 1 minus ion, so they balance by themselves. And the next thing is thinking about what else is formed in this equation. So we have said up here that water is being generated, but let's actually think about where that is coming from. So we've got um, sodium over here, so we can cross that one out because we know that it has been formed on the other side of the reaction, other side of the equation. Chloride is here, we can cross that out, okay. So that means over here we have a hydroxide left over and over here we have a hydrogen ion left over. So if you put those together that ends up forming H2O and so we can add that up here and that is where the water actually comes from. The next part of the rule is that you now have to go through and look at your equation and you need to add up how many of each element is on each side of the equation. So by the time you finish balancing your equation there must be the same number of elements on both sides. So this is where this whole idea of balancing comes from. So you have the same number of molecules on this side and the same number of molecules on this side. It is not possible to create molecules out of nothing and nor can we lose molecules into nothing. So they must be even on both sides. Okay. So the way that I find is easiest to do this is that I simply draw a line down the middle of the equation and then I'm going to write out each of the individual elements that are found on either side. Okay. So on this side we have sodium, we also have chloride ion 
And I just as an aside, I find it better to do the metal and the non-metal first, and then we will do the hydrogens and the oxygens um, subsequently. Okay, so we've got H there and O down here. Write the same thing out on the other side, because remember that we have the same atoms over there. Okay, and let's go through and count them up. So sodium, we just have one sodium atom, so write down a one. We have one chloride, one. Hydrogen, we have one here within the hydroxide, and we have a second one here in the hydrochloric acid. So in total there are going to be two hydrogen ions, or atoms in there. And finally, only one oxygen, so we write down a one there. Let's go over the other side, and we'll do the same for those. So sodium is one over here, chloride one, hydrogen we've got two within the water, and oxygen is one there, okay? So now you go through and you just check that it's the same on both sides, so one to one, one to one, two to two, one to one. So this is one of those lovely equations that actually balances itself for you and you do not need to do anything further. So um, this here is actually your final lovely balanced equation. We are going to do a couple more now that do require a bit more balancing, but this was just a good starting place to show you the general idea behind it. Okay, let's do a slightly trickier one, or just a different one anyway. Um, so I've written out the word equation for us already. So we have calcium hydroxide here, which is a base, sulfuric acid, which is the acid obviously, and that forms calcium sulfate. So the calcium has come here from the metal. Um, the, the calcium is the metal from the base here, and sulfate is the non-metal component, which has come from the sulfuric acid here as well. And we also know that water is formed in this reaction, okay? So let's go through and we're going to write out the symbols for this equation next and then we will balance them, okay? So calcium hydroxide, we'll start with that one, so CA. Remember that because hydroxide is a 1 minus ion and calcium is a 2 plus ion, we need to put brackets in there, okay? So that means that we will have two hydroxide ions for every calcium ion. And to that we're going to add sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. And on the other side, that will give us calcium sulfate, which is CaSO4. Remembering that calcium is 2 plus, SO4 2 minus, so that balances nicely. And water on the end there okay so the next thing is we draw a line down the middle and we're going to count up how many are on each side okay so over here we have calcium we have a sulfate now this is the first bit that's slightly trickier from what we had done previously keep the sulfate group together you notice that here it is SO4 over here it is SO4, it does not change and therefore you do not need to count the sulfur and the oxygen separately if you start breaking it up into those individual components, it gets very confusing because you've got an oxygen here, an oxygen here, as well as inside the sulfate. So treat it like a little family group that must stay together at all times, and it just makes life much easier for yourself. Okay, so sulfate, we've also got hydrogens and oxygens. Let's write that on the other side. So calcium, sulfate, hydrogen, oxygen. Okay, so let's go through and count up how many we have on each side. Over on the left side here, we have one calcium. We also have one sulfate group. Hydrogens, oh, a bit more tricky. Okay, so we've got two hydrogens here. And because OH is inside the brackets, and it's got a two outside of it, we actually have two hydrogens in there as well. Okay, so we've got two there. And two here, so altogether we have four hydrogen ions. Let's look at the oxygen. Now remember, we don't count this one because we've already counted it in the form of the sulfate. So we're just looking at the oxygen here, and there are two of them there. Okay, over the other side, we've got one calcium, we have one sulfate. Let's look at the hydrogens. We've just got two hydrogens there. 
so we'll write down two and oxygens remembering don't count this one because it's part of sulfate so we'll just count the O that's in the water there and we have one over that side okay so the next thing is you go through your list and you see whether it adds up or not see whether it's the same on both sides one here one here so that's looking okay so far one sulfate one sulfate four hydrogens oh two hydrogens two oxygens one oxygen okay the next thing you have to ask yourself is how can I make this side the same as this side so we have two hydrogens one oxygen four hydrogens two oxygens so if you look at those numbers it becomes quite apparent that this is double the number of hydrogens and oxygens compared to over here so the easiest way to deal with that and I'll just do this in a separate color is actually going to put a two in front of the water and then if you add them up again we can change these ones now and we will now have this big two means that everything following it will be doubled so everything followed it will be multiplied by that number so two on the outside and two on the other side of hydrogen so all together we're going to have four hydrogens and oxygen is also following this big two and so therefore we will now have two oxygens as well so you can go through this again and double check one 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 four hydrogens four hydrogens two oxygens two oxygens okay so that means that this is our equation now with the two in front of it okay and a tip which is something I did not do in this one is that you leave um, a little bit of space in front of each of the compounds as you go and it means that if you come back to balance it you've got some room if you need to put those numbers in front and remember that number to balance the equation must be in front of that compound because you were saying that there is that many multiples of that particular compound to balance your equation you cannot put the numbers within a compound because that would change the chemical structure of it. It would change the ratio of the ions and we are not doing that. All we're doing is saying we have multiple numbers of this particular compound. Okay, this is the last one we're going to do, which is another little um, slightly trickier one. And what I would like you guys to do now is to pause the video on the screen and go through and see if you can work this one out by yourself. And then um, once you've done that, unpause it and we will run through this together. Okay, so pause your video now. Okay, so hopefully you have done that. Um, so let's write out the word equation first. So lithium oxide and nitric acid. That is going to give us, I'll just type this in for us to make it a bit easier, lithium nitrate, and it's also going to produce water. Okay, so lithium nitrate and water, remembering that the lithium matches up here, and the nitrate has come from within the nitric acid. Okay, so let's write out um, these symbols for our equation. So lithium oxide, lithium is a 1 plus, oxide is a 2 minus, and so that means it's going to end up being Li2O in order to balance that. We then have nitric acid, which is HNO3. And this forms lithium nitrate. Now fortunately nitrate is a 1 minus ion, so this balances nicely. L-I-N-O-3. And water, obviously. Okay. So next step, draw a line down the middle. And we will add these up on either side. So we have lithium. Nitrate is the next one. Remembering that this is a family group, a polyatomic ion, so it sticks together and hydrogens and oxygens. Let's write that out on the other side also. Okay, this side we've got two lithiums. So write down two nitrates. We just have one nitrate group. Hydrogens, we've only got one hydrogen over here. And oxygen, remember we don't count this oxygen because it's part of the nitrate group. We just count the oxygen that is separate to that. So there's only one of them over here. Other side, one lithium there. Nitrate, one nitrate. Hydrogens, now got two hydrogens. 
and oxygens. Once again, don't count this one, just count the one that is associated with water. And so we'll have one over this side, okay? Now this is slightly trickier because look, two lithiums, only one lithium, and hydrogen isn't balanced either. So what do you do first? How do you manage to sort of get around this? My suggestion is that you always start with the metals and the non-metal groups first because hydrogen and oxygen tend to be found in multiple places and it becomes much more difficult to figure out where to balance them but the metals and the non-metal groups will only be found in one place so there is only one place that you can actually balance them okay so let's look at that first one we've got two lithiums over this side and only one over this side so the best thing to do is that we're going to stick a big two So big two in front of lithium nitrate. Let's change our numbers as we go so we don't lose track. So we now have two lithiums and because everything after that two is doubled, we also have two nitrate groups, okay? So now you're starting to think, oh no, I've stuffed this one up. Don't worry, just keep going with it and we'll see how we go, okay? So lithium is balanced, so that's fine. Do the nitrates next because there's only one place that you can actually balance them. So we've got two over this side now and only one over this side. So the next obvious answer becomes put a two over here. Now I'm just showing you these in different colors so that you can see the progression that you make and the idea that you cannot balance everything at the same time. You need to work through this progressively counting as you go. Okay, so let's go through and see what we've changed. So over on the left side, we now have two nitrate groups, but we've also changed our hydrogens. So we've now got two hydrogens as well, okay? Let's go back and double check, see if they're adding up. So two to two, two to two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen, one oxygen. So it actually balances. So even though it looked like it was getting a little bit complex, that is our final equation now. So um, it's balanced on both sides of the equation. You've got the same number of atoms or ions on both sides. We have not lost, we have not gained, okay? My next suggestion is simply that you make up some acid and base reactions and you just practice this over and over again because this is a skill that you need to practice to become good at. It's not something that you necessarily immediately get right away, okay? Good luck.